Halloween today because we're all about that grace and it is Reformation Sunday. You might have seen as we came in, we we're all prepared for Reformation Sunday with our 95 theses posted to the door. Oh, wait, 95 Reeses posted to the door. So be sure on the way out to get a little sweet treat to remind you of how sweet God's grace is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, good times, huh? Yes, I did fall down the entire basement stairs. Yes, I did break both wrists, had to have surgery, had plates in them. I just lost my balance is all. I didn't trip or anything. Um, life has been fun this week. So we've had to make some changes on some things we had planned for today. So, um, and for next week too. So morning and evening prayer are going to be canceled one more week. I just can't, I can't handle the phone and, and the, yeah, I just can't do it. So we'll see, we're, gonna, we're just going to take this week by week until we figure out, hopefully I'm getting different cast after this week and I'll be able to have a little more dexterity and get some things done. Um, the other thing that is kind of a pressing issue for me is I cannot drive. And when Tim goes to work, if I would get a call and need to go to the hospital or the nursing home or someone's home, um, if I could have some people who would be available in the evenings that could do emergency transportation for me, if I would get a pastoral care call, that, that would be so awesome. That's one way that you could help is just to be on call. I rarely get those calls, but you never know. Um, so if I could, you know, if you could just let me know if you were, you would be able to do that. Okay, next slide. So one of the things that we're going to change, it's not treats at the church anymore, because I can't obviously handle making hot chocolate and cider and passing it out and everything. The photo booth is still happening. It is up in the other room, um, and it'll be available at, well, during and after the reception for our confirmation students today. Uh, Trick-or-treaters go to the parsonage. It will, there'll be a table in the garage like we did last year with the treats on it. And um, I'm sorry, very disappointed. And my dragon costume has to go back into storage for one more year. I've been waiting two years to wear this costume. I am so loved. Okay, but yes, we do have the photo booth going with little signs for you signs that you can write your own message on if you want with dry erase markers. Okay, onward. Parish League is packing care packages for our college students on November 3rd. If you'd like to contribute, please leave a non-perishable non -perishable treats at the church by Wednesday. And 20, is that what we're thinking? Yeah, like two dozen. Two dozen is what? We have extras, and then we have a list of, we'll try to cover the kids that aren't part of our parents also. Right. Okay. So, um, and of course, then we also have all for praise that night as well. Next slide. Uh, we are still doing soup and scripture. We are still doing Bible coffee. And then we have Welka board meeting, 9 o'clock on Wednesday. Parish League, care packages, and all for praise, and then worship the following week. So that's what we've got going on for this week. Um, prayer requests. Okay. Uh, Bob Bruns has been placed in hospice care. He is still at the nursing home, but they have moved him into hospice. So he's been on our prayers. We've been praying for him. But this week especially, extra prayers for him and his family um, are very much appreciated. Uh, we continue to pray for Marjorie Lipness, Oliver Suther, Terry Price, Deb Mack, Steve Franzine, Stuart Franzine, Holly Flaudry, Sharon Helgeson, me, and Roland, and I'm not sure how the last name is pronounced, Janet, Janot. Um, that is Natalie Anderson's little baby, and he has COVID. They took him to St. 
loops and then life flighted him down to, I'm assuming is, he's in children. She didn't tell me which hospital, one of the hospitals in Sioux Falls. So he is down there and uh, definitely needs our prayers. Am I missing anybody? I feel like I'm missing somebody. Okay, let's take a look at birthdays. Um, did I, I didn't see Phyllis here, did I? Yeah, I saw Okay, so is there anybody here on the birthday list? I'm seeing somebody's pointing. Oh, Booker just wants me to sing to somebody. Okay. Um, anybody here, guest included, having a birthday or an anniversary that you'd like to have recognized today? Sorry, Booker, we don't get to sing today. Okay, then um, we'll begin worship. I want to uh, welcome everyone who is here to support our confirmation students. Ben Colby and Ryder um, as we as they affirm their faith later on in the service. Um, we, we do have a confirmation video, but it will be at the very end of the service. Sorry, folks that are watching this on uh, live stream. I don't have the licensing for the music that the boys have selected to go behind their video, and so I would I can't broadcast it on Facebook but I will put the video up on Facebook separately without music so you can look at it later. But it'll, we'll turn off the live stream, we'll do the video, and then we'll end worship. So, um, so we can do it that way. Okay. Let's begin with our call to worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Blessed be God who sustains and protects his holy church. And I forgot. I forgot to introduce, we do have a guest preacher today who is going to be doing most of the service for me, so I don't wear out too fast, um, Pastor Renee from the Synod office, and I'll be introducing her more fully a little bit later. Okay. Our gathering hymn is Sanctuary. It is not in the bulletin or in any of our hymnals. The words are up on the screen. We're going to sing it twice. <coughs> Like lost sheep, we have gone astray. 
We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. I don't know if we have anybody here that was scheduled to read, but I thought I would just go ahead and read the uh, Old Testament reading and our Psalms litany. Our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me, even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wrongdoing and never remember, again remember their sins. Our psalm litany is based on Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength. And our presence help in distress. Though the earth trembles and mountains slide into the sea, we will not fear. Waters may rise and roar and mountains shake at their surging. But the God who hosts with us, our stronghold, the God of Israel. Even if nations are in chaos and kingdoms fall, God's voice resounds, the earth melts away. Yahweh is with us, the God of Israel is our stronghold. Come, see the deeds of the Most High. The marvelous things God has done on earth. All over the world, God has stopped wars, breaking up bows and splintering spears, burning the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God, exalted among all the nations upon the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you desire for reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They responded, We are Abraham's children. We've never been anyone's slaves. How can you say that we will be set free? Jesus answered, I assure you that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave isn't a permanent member of the household, but a son is. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you really will be free. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated, children, if you'd like to come up for our children's sermon.
Okay. Come on, guys. Taylor, can I have you hold this book for me? I'm going to have you turn the pages. So today, it isn't just Halloween, although I bet you're excited about Halloween today, huh? Yeah. You guys want to come up here a little bit? Let me move this out of the way. There we go. A little bit closer so you can see the book. So it's also Reformation Day. It's an important day in the Lutheran Church. Um, it's when we remember that Martin Luther put the 95 Theses, which are statements that he wanted to have discussed. And that's what you did back in the day. When you wanted to have something discussed, you posted them on a board for public discussion. Okay, so I'm going to read you a story a little bit to talk about Martin Luther. So we've got this lovely Martin Luther pop-up book. Okay, so if you could just hold it, turn it around. So, okay. Then. Many years ago, there lived a young man named Martin Luther. Young Martin was studying to be a lawyer. But one day he got caught in a terrible storm. He was so afraid that he promised God that he would become a monk if he escaped the storm. The storm didn't, or the storm died down, and Martin Luther kept his promise. Next page. Okay. Martin Luther developed or devoted his life to God. He began studying the Bible, where he read for himself what it said about having faith in Jesus. In his reading, Martin discovered that the very good discovered the very good news that we are saved by faith. Martin Luther didn't like what the church was teaching about faith and good works. He especially didn't like the teaching that Christians could go to heaven faster by paying money to the church. So he wrote down 95 theses explaining his disagreements, then shared them for others to read and discuss. Not everyone agreed with Martin Luther's ideas. They were so mad that they brought him before the Holy Roman Emperor and asked Martin to take back everything he said, but he refused and stood by his beliefs. Martin Luther's life was in danger on the way back home. The carriage he was riding in was surrounded by riders. Were they enemies? No, the riders were friends. They'd come to take Martin away to a castle where he would be safe. Martin Luther kept writing his ideas about God's grace and faith. His writings were printed and spread far and wide. He even translated the Bible into German so that ordinary people in his country could read it and think about it for themselves. Martin Luther inspired a reformation of the church. Many women and men followed in Martin's footsteps by introducing new ideas and big changes. Even today, Christians reform the church as we read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow Jesus in faith. Thank you. So, Martin Luther gave us the good news that we can be right with God through our faith in Jesus Christ. And it wasn't what we did. And I'm really glad that that's the case because I'm going to always do a real good job following God. And I'm glad that I can go to God and ask for forgiveness. And we do that every Sunday at the beginning of worship. And that then whatever I do, I do to my, the best of my ability out of grateful love that God loves me and forgives me and has given me faith. God has given you faith as well. And it is very sweet. So we're going to pray real quick and then you guys can grab a treat out of the basket underneath the tree as you head back to your seats. But be sure on your way out to grab one of my 95 Reese's so you can remember how sweet God's grace is. And I invite you all to grab a night one of the 95 Reese's so you also remember how sweet God's grace is. Let's pray. Holy One, thank you for sending us Jesus to teach us lives of faith, 
to give his life for ours for forgiveness of sins. Thank you for sending people throughout the ages who have taught us how to follow you, and especially reformers like Martin Luther, who have taught us to rely on faith and not our own works. Amen. Okay, I'll just put that right there and head back to your seats. Grab a treat first. Okay, as I said, I, I said I would introduce Pastor Renee here. This is Pastor Renee Sipple Larson. She is the Director of Associate, Associate Division, okay, in charge of congregational relations and candidacy and, and things like that. And um, we had her scheduled to come today anyhow because it was a fifth Sunday. And I am so glad she's here because <laughs> I really need the help today. Thank you, Pastor Mona. Well, I bring you all greetings as your synod partner um, in ministry and in the church uh, from Bishop Constanza. And I am so excited to be here with you today to preach and to also be involved in the affirmation of faith of these three uh, young men who you have brought up in your congregation. So grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith is powerful. A few years ago, my husband, John, and I hosted his aunt and uncle for lunch. And throughout our time together, they told us stories about family members that we had never heard before. One of which was of John's great-great-grandmother. In the late 1800s, as tuberculosis was ravaging much of the United States, including the upper Midwest, a faith leader gathered a small group of people together in a small rural church in southern Minnesota. That faith leader asked the group if any of them had faith enough to care for a family that was dying of tuberculosis. John's great-great-grandmother stood up and agreed to care for them. She risked her life going into their home with an extremely contagious disease, which doctors were only beginning at the time to learn about, and she lived to tell about it. Faith is powerful. I think of her and this story when hearing Jesus' words in the Gospel of John, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is the truth. In fact, in John 14, 6, Jesus says it outright, and I'm sure you know it, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Knowing the truth, knowing and having a relationship with Jesus will make you free. John's great-great-grandmother knew Christ, and it made her free to not fear illness or death. It made her free to love and serve a dying family. Oftentimes we think we know what freedom means. We think it means doing whatever we want. That's not the kind of freedom Jesus is talking about. To illustrate this point, we can look back at the beginning of chapter 8 in the Gospel of John. Believe it or not, if we just read the lectionary and don't hear today's text from John 8, we never actually get into John 7 and 8. And so it's really good as we read Jesus' words in John 8 to wonder what comes before it. And right before it, there is a woman who is caught in adultery. In her humiliation, she is drugged before and made to stand in front of all the religious leaders. A crowd of people in her community, and also Jesus. 
The man she was with, however, is nowhere to be found. She is brought alone in her humiliation before this great crowd. And the religious leaders quote the law. This woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. What do you say? All eyes are on Jesus. And this is kind of a funny part in the story. Jesus thinks it's a good time to simply bend down and start writing in the dirt with his finger. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that part of the story? We don't know what he's writing or what he's really doing. The scripture just tells us he just bends down and starts writing in the dirt with his finger. And people keep questioning Jesus so they can get on with murdering this woman. And so he stands up finally and he says, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then Jesus just goes back to writing in the dirt. And one by one, each of these women's accusers walk away until only she and Jesus are left. Jesus straightens up again, looks at the woman, and says to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She says, No one, sir. And Jesus responds, Neither do I condemn you. Go on your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Pastor Barbara Lundblad reflects on this story and writes this. The truth bent down to be with a woman accused. This truth set her free from death, free to turn her life around. That is freedom. That is faith. So here's one last story about faith and freedom. We heard it a little bit with the book, but 500 years ago, Martin Luther read the Bible, and it changed the world. It certainly changed his life. God has power like that through Scripture to change the lives of people who read it and hear it proclaimed. The living word bears Christ, and it's exactly where Luther came to know Jesus, the one who set him free. Luther was a person burdened by sin. There's this German word, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it's called anfectum. It almost just has that sense of, like, suffering. <laughs> and Bishop Constanza actually is German, from Germany, so I hope I'm pronouncing it right, but it's called anfectum. And it's the word that Luther used to describe the overwhelming times of spiritual trial, terror, and despair, and religious crisis that he experienced throughout his life. He thought that there was nothing he could do, that he was just sinning all day long. And he went confessions so many times a day that his confessors grew completely tired of him. He's like, oh, here he comes again. <laughs> confess his sin because he had a bad thought. You know, and they finally said, Luther, this is too much. But Luther believed and was taught that God was vengeful. That God was just waiting to strike him down for not being good enough. And he lived in constant fear and judgment of God. But then Luther read scripture. Passages like this from Romans. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Passages like this completely changed Luther's life and the trajectory of the church at the time. There was nothing he needed to do to earn the love of God or earn his salvation. His faith in Jesus was enough. And it wasn't about him. It was about God and what God has done for him and for you. 
The burden and the weight of fear and the sin he felt in his own life was lifted. And he was set free. Faith is powerful. Reformation Sunday is a day in the Lutheran Church in which many of our young people are confirmed, affirming their faith in Jesus Christ and the promises God made to them in their baptism. And today we're fortunate enough to celebrate this affirmation of faith with Benjamin, Colby, and Ryder. Our children are often brought to the waters of baptism as infants. And when they are babies, their parents and sponsors and you all as congregation members promise to pray for them. You promise to bring them to worship and to teach them about Jesus in order that they may grow to love and trust God. That is why. In order that they may grow to love and trust God. And you have fulfilled these promises and today they will affirm them on their own. When I was confirmed, I was a sophomore in high school and I uh, was raised in this rural church in western North Dakota. And if it wasn't for my mother, week in and week out, fulfilling her promise to take me to worship, and my, it was not easy with three of us, let me tell you, I do not know where my faith would be today. And I remember as a sophomore being nervous, like, am I ready for this? And am I going to get the words, right, to the Apostles' Creed? I'm sure you guys are worried about that at all, right? <laughs> but I remember being relieved because the people of God, those who promised to raise me in the faith, said the words of the Apostles' Creed with me together. Because they also were affirming their faith that day right along with me. Because God makes a covenant to us, a promise, in holy baptism. And on days like today, we commit to this covenant, and I'm going to read it for you. You'll hear it later in the affirmation rite. That we promise to live among God's faithful people. To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Piece of cake, right? You guys have this thing. <laughs> little daunting, right? To strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Oh my goodness, what does that even mean? But we figure it out together as the people of God, empowered through the Holy Spirit here in this place. It's a monumental task, and we cannot do it alone. Without this initiation and help of guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are left to our own devices. But fortunate for us, you and I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever in your baptism. And as Lutherans, we believe that God is the actor in baptism, that there is nothing we can do but let God's grace wash over us, and you and I are given the gift of faith. And faith is really trusting God. That's what it is. It's being in relationship with Jesus. And faith is both individual, but also communal. Look at all of you gathered here today. Your baptismal life culminates in your death, and all this time in between is this continuum in your life of faith in the one who has died for you. And all along the way, God gives us the gift of one another. So in the rite of affirmation by the assembly, when we do this recommitment, there is this question that's asked to everyone. It's this. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? And the assembly responds, we do and we ask God to help and guide us. Don't we need this sometimes? I mean, more than ever, <laughs> it seems like today, when everything outside of these walls threaten to divide us, and yet we are made in one body in Jesus Christ. So let's practice this. Now I'm going to ask you this question, and you're going to respond. People of God, Langford Area Parish, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? If so, say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Today is a day in which you and I recommit to our walk with Christ and our life together as the church. 
to more deeply investing in reading of scripture and attending worship, and to try the best we can to love and serve God and neighbor as a disciple of Jesus. As Luther discovered 500 years ago, all this is grace, all of it, and it is given to you and to me in order that we may have confidence in the love of God, that we may care for people who are dying, like John's great-great-grandmother, or so be so transformed by scripture that we live out our lives in service to God and neighbor, like Luther was. So Jesus the Son has a place in the household of God forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Thanks be to God. So there must be many uh, churches who sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This is no different for us this morning. And you can find that hymn uh, 229 in the Green Hymn.
backstory on Ben Emmons who be back with us in our parish today. Um, ben was an active member in our church for many years along with his mom and dad and brother and sister. And um, they moved away a few years ago. I remember telling Ben, you are always welcome to come back here, as I'm sure many in our community have done. Um, this past summer, he came back and did BBS with us and spent a week in our parish staying with the Van Force. And he reached out to pastor, and I don't know all the details, but because um, I know they're active in a church where they're at, but unable to be confirmed. And he said, I'd really like to finish this. And so I just think it's important that those seeds that we have planted, um, they are continuing to grow, and the promises we've made are now coming fourfold for us to see Ben come back and be confirmed and make that decision on his own. Um, so I think that's important that you as a parish get to see. Um, ben is actually one of the reasons we give our third grade Bibles now in the spring instead of the fall, because he was one of my little guys that came and said, I went to camp this year and I didn't have a Bible. And we were like, hey, we need to fix that. So um, Ben's legacy lives on. So it is with great honor to introduce these boys to you. Benjamin Scott Amundsen, son of Denny Amundsen and Scott Amundsen. Colby Lee Dowen, son of Lisa and Mylan Heinz Dowen. And Perry Zimmerman. Ryder Daniel Smith, son of Carla Hardy and Scott Smith. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers whom you have made your own by water and word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to a new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, say I do. Okay. Do you renounce the power of this world that rebel against God? Again, I do. And do you renounce the way of sin that draw you from God? One more time. Okay. I invite the congregation to stand as you desire and confess your faith along with our candidates um, or our confirmands as they affirm their faith publicly. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the Father of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living of the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God has made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of, Christ, of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I'm going to have you each individually respond, and we'll just start with Ben and just go right down the line. And you were going to say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Holy. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Writer? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Okay. People of God, do you promise to support these brothers and pray for them in their lives in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. I always ask the confirmands to select songs that they would like to hear 
uh, during their affirmation and baptism service. And these guys were big at going to camp when they were younger. Very, very faithful. Did you still go back? No, okay. Very, very faithful going to camp. And they, the beginning song sanctuary they select, and they also selected Light the Fire, which again is another song that they have at camp, and we sing as well sometimes. Ray, are you singing the melody line, or are you singing the echo line? Uh, melody. Okay, I will do the echo then. Okay. Yeah, I thought I would give you. Okay, when we get into... student. I know we've got some overlap on confirmation coaches. So we're going to start in this corner. So you guys go ahead and kneel. We're going to start in this corner and work our way, way around. We do this one at a time so you can move as, you, as necessary. So please come up and gather around your young person. water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Benjamin the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Ryder the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Colby the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Parents if, and sponsors and coaches, if you will go back to your seats, boys, will you line back up? And we will present our newly confirmed break here, guys. And as 
the Congregational President of Evangelical. I've asked Scott to lead this part. Let us rejoice with these brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. Welcome as fully confirmed members. That means you get to vote and everything. Well, no, I think you have to be 18 here. Yeah. Can they serve on council, though, Pastor Ramona? Huh? Can they serve on council? They can member? serve on council. Wow, wow. Well, well, well. Here's yeah. your newest council members, everybody. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We can have youth representatives. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I can't really, but let's congratulate everyone. <laughs> And you guys can move out to your seats. Congratulations. I'd invite you to stand as you're able for the prayers of the people. Each petition will end, Hear us, O God, and I invite you to respond your mercy as free again. With the whole people of God and Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Make us free to be the church in the world, God of grace. Form our mission and ministry in ways that truly and tangibly give new life, hope, and grace in abundance. We especially pray this day for all the confirmands, that their lives of faith may continue to deepen and flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Make us free to be one with your creation, God of grace. Fill us with your spirit and lead us to find better ways to honor what you have given us. Help us to abandon our wasteful habits and bless all farmers during this season of harvest. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Make us free to be brothers and sisters, God of grace. Shatter the distinctions that create hatred and fear. Open our eyes to see one another as people who bear the image and likeness of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Make us free to be whole and healthy persons, God of grace. Give respite to caregivers. Inspire scientists to find cures, especially to diseases like COVID and cancer. And make us well in mind, body, and soul. Especially we lift up today Marjorie, Oliver, Terry, Bob, Steve, Stuart, Holly, Deb, Pastor Ramona, and Baby Roland. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Make us free to be people of purpose. Reform apathy into action. Bless us with a determination to let go of those things that keep us stagnant and drive us to witness to the gospel. Make us free to be still and know you. Join our voices with all the saints, especially the men and women of the Reformation, who now sing in one heavenly choir. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is good. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, you may be seated and we'll receive this morning's offering. Just a reminder that today's offering is going to Church on the Street. Our fifth Sundays are always Mission Sundays. And our confirmation, our confirmants selected Church on the Street as the ministry they would like to support today.
Please stand. Sending him is uh, the Church's One Foundation, verses 1 and 2. You may be seated. 